Welcome back. We're talking about Brazil's mounting challenges and how the country will move forward. Joining me now from Sao Paulo is Fabio Osterman, one of the founders and a former coordinator of the Movimento Brasil Livre, the main civil society group active on the opposition to the current government in Brazil. And from the U.S. state of Utah, Paulo Sotero is director of the Brazil Institute of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Paulo, let me start with you. As we've been hearing, Brazil facing myriad economic problems right now, and of course that corruption scandal as well. We also heard from our reporter that the economy could shrink by 25 to 3% this year. Now, some measures have been taken by the government. Discretionary spending has been cut, and they've made it a little bit more difficult for the unemployed to connect benefits. The eligibility requirements have been toughened. But given all that, this is a crucial year for Brazil. It hosts the Olympics this year. What's the outlook? The outlook is not very promising. As you stated, uh, the economy is bound to continue to shrink. Uh, now most uh, analysts believe that uh, we will be talking about economic growth only in 2017, maybe even in 18. Uh, the president facing an impeachment process, impeachment that pro is unlikely to be successful. The president will stay in power, but uh, she has not been able to harness the support in Congress, in her own coalition, in the public necessary to confront the situation. Uh, so uh, it is a complicated era for Brazil, a complicated moment. Uh, Anti-corruption investigations uh, continuing. Actually, yesterday a new phase started. Now getting the investigators, the investigations very close to former President uh, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, who has been sort of the main supporter and uh, mentor to President Dilma Rousseff. All in all, a very uh, negative outlook at this point. Fabio, you represent an important group in Brazil, young people. You're the leader of a youth movement. What do young people want to see in Brazil right now? Uh, young people in Brazil want to see change uh, because we are not satisfied with the ways our country has been going. And uh, we're currently undergoing one of the worst economic and political crises of our whole history, uh, certainly the worst times in the last 20, 20 years, especially because we have been going through uh, a period of growth, a period of, of, uh, of uh, development that was stopped by some economic measures and political uh, misdemeanors that uh, led the country to this situation. Inflation is rising, unemployment is rising, and we don't see any, in any foreseeable future, uh, a different direction in this path. The government doesn't know where to go. Uh, it looks, the president seems like uh, she doesn't have a clue of what she, 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 she should be doing. She now, uh, she sometimes uh, seems to be swerving to the right, to the left, but she doesn't have the conviction to know where to lead the country, especially the economy. And this is something that everybody knows. Uh, I'm, I'm not very confident that she will be impeached before the uh, local elections that we have this year in October. But I, I think the scenario is very uncertain. And I personally don't believe that she will finish her term which means that she will not uh, continue to be the president until 2018 because the crisis is getting deeper and deeper. Paolo, there's some very bitter medicine being prescribed for Brazil's ills. Uh, given that the president is under a cloud of impeachment right now, is she the person that is going to be able to administer this medicine? I mean, what they're talking about here is more spending cuts. They talk about austerity. Yeah, as Fabio mentioned, you know, uh, uh, she clearly uh, is not the person that uh, will have the capacity to do uh, the very uh, 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 the, uh, difficult measures that will have to be uh, implemented to rebalance fiscal accounts in Brazil, uh, to put Brazil back on a path to economic growth. The fact is that, you know, we have an institutional democracy in Brazil. You cannot remove 
remove the president at will. It has to follow a process. The process is started by uh, the opposition has not, and it's unlikely at this point, uh, to uh, succeed. I don't believe that the mobilization of uh, in the streets uh, has uh, indicated any uh, desire from the people to add to the pressure, in part because uh, the opposition uh, to President Dilma Rousseff has not been able to offer uh, also a credible alternative. So uh, people are, the country seems to be adrift. Uh, there is a political, there is a crisis of leadership essentially, uh, and uh, uh, nothing is offered uh, to counter uh, the government of President Dilma Rousseff. Uh, which is supported by barely 10% of the population. Uh, as Fabio mentioned, the, con the, the situation, the economic situation continues to deteriorate. What could change this is that this deterioration uh, will at some point cause a reaction because unemployment is going up, uh, unemployment benefits are running out. Uh, I was just uh, in Sao Paulo, and you can see that there is a sense of great apprehension, enormous frustration, because Brazil was going in a totally different direction uh, until about two years ago. Uh, it, it, there is also a sense in Brazil that this crisis uh, was created in Brazil, this uh, uh, is self-imposed, and the solutions will have to be found in Brazil by Brazilians uh, through the uh, institutional channels we have. Uh, the frustration is that uh, we, we seem to be, continue to be in gridlock. Fabio, uh, Forbes magazine, a very influential business and financial magazine, says that the Brazilian political system as a whole is lacking in credibility. Do you believe that to be the case, that the political system here is a major part of the problem in Brazil? Well, the political and economic problem in Brazil are completely intertwined. Uh, I tend to agree partially with what Paulo said, but I also disagree about S some of the things he said. For instance, in Brazil we have been, uh, we see in the streets, and the polls show this very, very clearly, that no more than 15% of the population support our government, but there is there's no a political project on the opposition. And this is due also to the fact that Brazilian democracy is still not that well developed. In terms of political parties, the, the only one political party that's uh, fully institutionalized, uh, as we say in the political science literature, is the Workers' Party. All the other parties are, are just an amalgamate of, uh, of political interests that can vary from state to state. And uh, this, this lack of credibility in the political system has been creating a gridlock. At the same time that Brazilians, and this means uh, civil society, business, and the political uh, establishment don't want our president to, to remain there. There's not enough will and enough strength to take her out through impeachment, through the uh, cassation of her, her, uh, her candidacy, which, which is a, a much more complex process. But uh, there's, there's no other way than to to keep on putting pressure in the political system to do its, its role and to put some pressure for, for the government to let the press and, the, and our, our uh, FBI, our federal police, to work properly as they have been doing to try to go deeper in the investigations about the corruption scandals that Brazil has been living through. We have unemployment rising in Brazil, as we've heard from yourself, as well as other guests. What is the job market like for young graduates in the country and for other job seekers as well? Yeah, I, I, can, I can see that from my, from my friends and colleagues from the movement and from uh, other networks I, I take part in. When I graduated uh, from school eight years ago, things were completely different. Right now, people are... Uh, are much more reluctant to join the labor market and they're considering other endeavors in life because uh, jobs are, are shrinking, uh, the wages are shrinking, the number of jobs is, is shrinking, and, 
an incredible uh, amount of people are even considering something very new for Brazilians because Brazil, Brazil is not a country that has a very great tradition of migrating abroad. If you take, for instance, the Brazilian colony in the U.S. is proportionately one of, one of the smallest in the country, if you especially if you compare it with other Latin American countries. But this, this reality is slowly changing because lots of Brazilians are starting to consider the idea of migrating because they don't see a future here. And this is very, very, very uh, dangerous for the future of the country because we, we're suffering a process of brain draining because most of, uh, of the uh, well-educated, highly skilled workers are starting to contemplate the idea of leaving the country. And this is, uh, this, uh, I mean, this, this uh, brings the prospects of, uh, of a dark future for our recovery. Paolo, this might be hard to believe, but only six years ago, it was Brazil that was lending money to the IMF. Uh, in 2009, Brazil lent the IMF $10 billion. Uh, the GDP in the country in 2010 rose to 7.5%. It was the fifth largest economy in the world. Do you think it's going to get back there? Well, it will get back there the same uh, resources that we did before, had before, we still have. Fabio is absolutely right about the danger of losing well-qualified manpower now, the, skill, the skilled workers that we need, that we still lack. Uh, but the crisis is uh, an opportunity to understand what happened, uh, to attack the problems with courage, uh, the problem in Brazil is a problem of confidence. Once you, the political politicians, political leaders, manage to uh, get out the message or to instill confidence that the country will be governed in a reasonable way, in a way uh, that uh, uh, distributes income, generates wealth, uh, uh, investments will be back in Brazil. The problem is that we don't have uh, right now that equation. Uh, the president is very weak. She is not, part, part, not particularly talented at uh, conducting the affairs of the state. Uh, she is increasingly isolated. And what is also uh, surprising is that uh, the opposition uh, doesn't seem to be capable of offering an alternative to this. So people are just uh, uh, watching. Uh, perplexed, suffering the consequences of this paralysis. The ones that are more, uh, you know, has a more enterprising spirit are doing precisely or are planning to do precisely what Fabio said. Uh, the people, the numbers of people uh, requesting information about how to immigrate to this and that country is increasing. Those who have ancestors in other countries are considering this. Uh, and uh, this is a, a very sad situation. Brazilians right now are in a mood that's very strange for Brazilians. We are normally a very upbeat a bunch of people, uh, and we are not. Okay, that's where we have to leave it. Paulo Sotero, Fabio Osterman, thanks to both of you for joining us.